Oh man, this is going to be a fun video. Maybe the funnest yet. Uh, let me start out with saying this is going to be about hard cast bullets um, for bear defense. The other video I had has been my best video and seems like people have liked it. Um, uh, I got one comment about uh, barrel length on this gun uh, being too short. And for him, uh, it, it was too short. That's that's completely fine. And that's what this is going to kind of go over. Uh, but let me start out with saying you choose your gun, your ammo, and everything based on what you feel is best. Not what I say. It's what you feel is best. This is just my opinion. Uh, and this may... Uh, point you in the right direction. It may point you in the total opposite direction of what I'm going to say. Uh, uh, whichever you choose is, is completely up to you. Um, I've got, I, I did a bullet calculator, um, energy calculator with velocity based on these rounds. Um, you know that it's just, it's just numbers on the paper, but it's still fun to think about. Um, and, and it may give you a little bit of insight on, on some of this, this ammo. And this is all hard cast. We've got all hard cast, uh, for the 10 millimeter, 44, 357. I got another 357. I'm going to talk about barrel length here in a minute. And I'm going to put a couple links in the description on this. This is not, I'm going to try to get through this as quick as I can. Uh, it, it's not going to be short because it's just, there's a lot to talk about. Um, hopefully, hopefully I can get through it though. Uh, I'm going to start with barrel length. Uh, usually whenever they put a velocity on, on a box, this is a 10 millimeter hard cast at 1,200 feet per second. It's 220 grain. Uh, usually you're not going to get that. Usually. Not always, but usually. I think out of all manufacturers, probably Buffalo Bore it could be one of the best for getting pretty close to what they say. Uh, these Grizzly cartridges um, are probably going to be... Eh, you know, somewhat, somewhat uh, less because they're probably using you know an eight, eight and three eighths inch barrel on on this load of thirteen hundred and fifty feet per second. I actually started at thirteen hundred feet per second um, to, uh, to to start out uh, with the bullet bullet energy calculator, but uh, the two and five eighths inch barrel on this gun. Um, uh, a viewer said something about it, it being too short. He would rather have a four to five inch barrel, and that's that's fine. A four to five inch barrel would would be a great choice. It's it's not like it's a bad choice. Not saying that. I just say that this gun is fine for the simple fact that if you look at uh, the ballistics by the inch, and you can look at other things, even Buffalo Bore's site, a lot of times revolvers based on barrel length don't always agree with just because it has a longer barrel that it shoots faster. A lot of times. The manufacturer date of the gun. Uh, now, I don't mean that a gun made on Friday is going to shoot faster than a gun made on Monday, you know, or vice versa. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying a gun like this one, made in the 60s, generally will not have the muzzle velocity of a gun like this one that's, that's you know, recently made. The tolerances are tighter on these. Uh, you just get better velocity. <clears throat> and I would, I would say if, you know, if I had $20... That, that these two guns, this one and this one in my hand, would both shoot uh, roughly the same. Probably the, the margin that you would have would be between one round to the next. You know, just the standard deviation would probably be what you're seeing, not necessarily the barrel length. And in fact, this one could shoot better, uh, faster than, than that one. So to say that if you were carrying this gun and you felt completely armed because it had a 4-inch barrel, but yet it shoots... You know, let's say with within, but let's say with this 180 gram buffalo board, this shot 1300 feet per second, and you felt completely well armed with this. But you got this gun, and it's got a two and five inch, inch two and five eighths inch barrel. Uh, no, I couldn't carry this, but it still shoots the same velocity, roughly there. You know, maybe within 10, 15 feet per second of each other. That's not going to be enough to make a difference, especially when we're talking about hard cast. These are non-velocity based bullets. Uh, velocity does mean something, but it doesn't mean it in the sense that, like this does. This is a velocity-based bullet. Hollow points need velocity to expand. Obviously, these need velocity to penetrate, but you don't have to hit a threshold for them to penetrate. These you do. Uh, barrel length is, is much more important when you're talking about hollow points. And a lot of times, hollow points 
uh, get a bad reputation from shorter barrels. Not necessarily this gun that I'm pointing at right now, but just, you know, like the Smith & Wesson Model 36 with a 1 and 7 8 inch barrel with a 38 special round, and it is probably not going to uh, 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 expand very good at all because it just doesn't have the velocity. It's a completely different subject than what we're talking about now. Uh, these are jack of the hollow points. These are not. All these ones that we're talking about are not. They are hard cast. They're hard, very, very hard. They're not soft lead. They're meant for not deforming. They're meant for busting a hole through, uh, causing damage, getting the vital organs, which is what you want, bear defense. It's not about uh, power per se. Even though you do need power, all these guns here are way underpowered. All of them. Uh, I would say probably the 460 and the 500, if you're looking for, for power in a handgun, is, is what you would want. But you're giving up concealability, shootability, rounds capacity, uh, the expense of the cartridge. Um, you know, you're giving up a whole lot. But if you had one shot and you were going to hit him, then, then you know, a 460 or 500 would be better. No, no doubt about it. Uh, this one is probably the best out of all three of them because it's got the most power, um, you know, generally speaking. But the 357 is a very, very, very good penetrator, and that's what we're really talking about here is, is penetration. Um, if you do, if, if, if you could do a, a legit penetration test on these, um, you know, the, the, the difference between each one of these cartridges, um, probably the, the, the least penetrating one could be the 10 millimeter. Honestly, uh, because it, it is, in fact, um, by a small mar margin, a little bit weaker than this gun. Now, this gun has a longer barrel. Now, this gun with a longer barrel is going to shoot faster than this gun. I, I, will, I will suffice it to say that it will. This is a four and a half inch barrel. It's standard rifle and it's a, it's a new gun. Um, it's not going to shoot to 1,200 feet per second. Uh, that's probably a six inch barrel that they got on there. Uh, and like I said, I got some velocities over here that I'm going to read off to you. Uh, and I might even put them in the description too, depending. Um, I, I just depends on how many people watch it. I may put it in there. But uh, generally speaking, I, I would probably say this one may penetrate the least, maybe. Um, but you're getting a lot more rounds. It's, it's generally speaking the weakest cartridge out of the three. Not by much. But when you factor in it's a bigger diameter, that's more mass dragging through, which slows down the bullet. So the extra power, which it doesn't really have over that one, um, your penetration may not be as good. And, and in tests I've seen, uh, the penetration from a 10 millimeter often is not as good as, as the 357. Uh, when you were talking hard cast, I don't believe I've seen any, any demonstrations where they've used hard cast. Uh, and did just a straight up penetration test between these three guns using these bullets. Um, I would still say probably the 357 is is, is going to be right there with this one. It may even beat it. it just just it just depends. Um, you know, it just really depends. This is going to penetrate very good. They're all three going to penetrate good. Don't get me wrong. I mean, this is going to penetrate good. But I think that if this one has 30 inches of penetration, this one may have. 25 you know this one may have 35 it may have 30 um you just you just you don't know until until you shoot it uh they're all three great choices when using the right ammo that's that's the main thing is using the right ammo and, and honestly whenever you're using these hard cast barrel length has less to do with it than than what some people may be thinking uh as as opposed to with with hollow points much more velocity based. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the 44 Magnum. Uh, the 44 Magnum with these right here, 320 grain, uh, wide lead nose, gas check, hard cast, at 1300 feet per second is 1201 foot pounds of energy. That's that's that would be at the muzzle, um, and and you're probably not going to get 1300 feet per second out of this four inch barrel. So we'll drop it down to 1,200 feet per second. 1,200 feet per second, you get 1,023 foot-pounds of energy. Go down another 100 feet, 
per second down to 1,100 feet, feet per second, you get 860 foot-pounds of energy. Down to 1,000 feet per second, you get 710. So to recap, 1,300 feet per second is 1,201. 1,200 feet per second is 1,023. 1,100 feet per second is 860. 1,000 feet per second is 710. All those are great numbers, and I do believe between 1,000 and 1,300 is, is somewhere where you would get this. Where it would be in there, I don't know. Uh, I think you would at least get 1,000 feet per second out of that round out of that gun. At least. Uh, probably probably closer to 11, 1150. So you're looking maybe around 900 foot-pounds of energy out of this gun. Uh, and that would be assuming at the barrel. The further you fire the bullet, you know, let's say the barrel is 50 yards away, and you got 1,300 foot-pounds of energy, by the time he the bullet gets there, it may be down to 1,000 uh, feet per second, which now you only got 710 foot-pounds of energy. So distance is a factor, too. Um, it, it definitely is, and that's where something where the, the shorter barrel, uh, the further away it is, uh, the, the less velocity. But recapping uh these two guns ain't going to be much dissimilar honestly uh, speaking quite frank they're they're really not going to be you know i think it's going to be the difference of one round to the next rather than any difference in, in barrel length now if you go with a new four inch gun um i think you're going to see some velocity increase over over that gun so it, it's it's not just barrel length it's the gun too um, the barrel of the gun, the quality of the gun, you know, who manufactured what year, uh, each gun is an individual, so on and so forth. Next, we'll go with the 357 Magnum. Uh, 1,400 feet per second is what Buffalo Bore claims on these. These uh, 180 grain. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. You probably can. It's not wanting to focus. I'll take my word on it. It's 1,400 feet per second. You're not going to get that out of either one of these guns. It's just not going to happen. Buffalo Boar claims that a Model 36 uh, with a 3-inch barrel, which is a touch underneath what this one is. This is 2 and 5 eighths, Is 1302. They got 1302 with, with these 180 grain loads right here. 1302 from a 3-inch barrel. Now, we're going to start out at 1,400, though. 1,400 feet per second at 783 foot-pounds of energy. That's a little bit more energy than what this has at 1,000 feet per second. Okay, so depending on what this gun shoots at the muzzle, um, maybe not from either one of these. I don't think either one of these are going to get 1,400 feet per second, but a 6-inch barrel, I think you definitely get 1,400 feet per second. Um, 783 foot-pounds of energy, and you may even get a little bit more velocity depending on the gun. Pythons, you'll see pythons don't shoot as fast as other guns, uh, and they're considered high quality. Some of the some of the highest. Okay, back on point. Fourteen hundred feet per second, seven hundred eighty-three foot-pounds of energy, and these are also one hundred eighty grain. Uh, these are gonna probably shoot less, uh, less, uh, uh, not as fast. They've got an uh, advertised velocity of thirteen fifty, so fifty feet per second. The knees, but they probably got. At least a six or eight inch barrel on that one. We're mostly talking about the Buffalo Bore. Okay, so recap at 1400 feet per second, 783 foot pounds of energy. 1300 feet per second. Remember the, the Model 36 with a three inch barrel from Buffalo Bore? I'm going to put that link in the description, this ammo right here. 675 put, foot pounds of energy. Not too bad. That's, that's pretty good. 1200 feet per second is 575 foot-pounds of energy. So you lost 100 feet per second. You lost 100 foot-pounds of energy. I would say that this gun would easily, easily, most definitely hit 1,200 feet per second. Easily. Um, I, I would say it's probably probably in the, in the, the 1,275 range is, is what I would guess either one of these two guns with that load would, would probably shoot around 1,275. Uh, 1275, you're looking probably around 650 foot-pounds of energy. Uh, that's quite a bit of energy for, for a hard cast. Uh, that, that would be uh, significant damage. Uh, it, it would be more than, more than enough, in my humble opinion, to, to penetrate uh, a great distance. And, and, and even in a big bear, I think it would, it would be more than enough to, to, to do at least a couple, couple feet of penetration. You know, at least at least uh, 
24 inches uh, easy I, I would say easy with with uh with 650 foot pounds of energy okay so down to 1100 feet per second 484 foot pounds of energy uh, either one of those guns are easily going to get 1100 feet per second uh, so now if you're saying 1100 feet per second you're saying further away from the from the from the muzzle maybe uh, you know maybe 15 20 yards uh, even then uh, it's 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 going to have quite a bit of energy, even though it's losing some. It's it, this is a heavy bullet. This is not a 125 grain bullet. This is a 180 grain bullet. Okay. So recap: 1400 feet per second with 180 grain is 783 foot pounds of energy. 1300 feet per second is 675 foot pounds or pounds feet, whichever one you want to call it. I call it foot pounds. Uh, 1,200 feet per second is 575 foot-pounds. 1,100 feet per second is 484 foot-pounds, okay? Got that? Good. Let's go on to the 200 grain 357 Magnum. 200 grain. 200 grain is 1,300 feet per second is 750 foot-pounds of energy. Now, you're not going to get 1,300 feet per second on either one of these guns, I don't think. Because you ain't going to get 1,300... Uh, you might get 1300 maybe, but like I said, maybe 1275 out of either one of these guns with the 180 grain. So let's go down to 1200 feet per second. That's 639 foot pounds of energy. I would say that you, you probably could get 1200 feet per second out of either one of these guns with that 200 grain. Um, maybe, maybe. 1100 feet per second, 537 foot, pound, foot pounds of energy. So let's recap. The 180 grain in 1100 feet per second and the, and, the, and the 200 grain in 1100 feet per second. The 180 grain is 484 foot pounds and the 200 grain is 537 foot pounds. So, um, I, I think either one of these guns with 200 grains would, 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 would easily get the, the 1100 feet per second. Um, uh, probably easily. Uh, maybe 1150, uh, 1175, somewhere, somewhere around in there. Uh, so again, you're probably looking at somewhere around 600 to 650 foot pounds of energy, which is is, is pretty good. Um, even even if you got this gun and you're shooting at 50 yards, you may hit the same amount of power that this one has up closer. So to say that that this one is almost so much better, well then you gotta you gotta base it on the distance too. What about the distance? You know, what if he isn't right on top of you? Uh, no doubt about it. You know you get more energy up close, but at a distance, as it's as it's going away, it's losing energy. So at some point there is going to be a correspondence between those rounds. So to say that the 357 could not do it is to say that this one could not do it at a certain distance. What distance is that? I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. But the he these heavier bullets. Uh, they do carry a lot of power. You know, they 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 help punch through stuff uh, a, a lot easier than than a lighter bullet. A lighter bullet's going to lose energy faster. All right, let's go to the to the ten millimeter hard cast. And this is all hard cast again. Ten millimeter right here. See it right here. Two hundred and twenty grain. The box is advertised twelve hundred feet per second, so that's where we started. Twelve hundred feet per second is seven hundred and three foot pounds of energy. So, so far, um, it is in the mid-ground between uh, um, the amount of energy it has. Even though it's a heavier bullet, it has a little bit less energy than uh, some of the other ones. And we'll recap that, too. I'm going to go over that. Uh, 1,100 feet per second for the 10 millimeter, 220 grain is 591 foot-pounds of energy. 1,000 feet per second is 488 foot-pounds of energy. So we got 1,200 is 703, 1,100 is 591, 1,000 is 488. Okay. Um, you're not going to get the 1,200 feet per second out of this gun. Um, you might get 1,150 maybe if you're lucky. It's got a 4.5 inch barrel. Uh, you just I, I just don't think you're going to get what it's what's advertised on the box. I, I would say you're probably... More in the range of 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 eleven hundred, which is five hundred ninety one. 
Um, maybe 1150, so you'd be in, in between 591 foot-pounds of energy and 703, I would say. What, what is that, about 625? 625? 625 foot-pounds of energy uh, is probably the top that you're going to get out of this one with this load. Uh, I think they got 200 grand ones. Um, so, a little bit heavier. A little, little bit heavier. Um, <clears throat> could help penetration. It could definitely help penetration. Another 40 grains over these. Um, 20 grains under the standard 240 grain. So, which one's most important to you? Um, weight? You know, the, the lighter weight? The heavier weight? Skinnier bullet? More penetration? The more weight, more penetration? Uh, more weight, more power, more velocity? Uh, no doubt about it, the 44 Magnum out of these guns is, is going gonna, is gonna to reign supreme. Uh, there's there's no getting around it, but these are gonna these are gonna hurt. These are gonna kick. These that's the, that's a lot of lead coming out of this. 320 grains of lead coming out of this handgun is is a lot to hold on to. It's it's uh, not 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 that it's not doable. Not saying that, uh, but it but it's but it's a handful. And I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna set the phone down. I'm gonna do something real quick. I'm gonna keep talking to you. I'm still here, guys. If you're still watching, bust your hearts. I'm going to open this gun up, and I'm going to put a round in there, and I'm going to show you something. Uh, one thing that you got to check on these is how far that bullet. Uh, some of those, um, I think Buffalo Bore makes a 340 grain. And I, I think not only power factor is too much, but I, I don't think it'll fit in the gun. And I think they specifically did that so it wouldn't fit in the gun so you don't blow the gun up because it's, it's too powerful. And that's why I went with these Grizzlies. It was it was one of the heaviest ones I could find that was hard cast that you could shoot out of this gun. Now, would you would you want to put ten thousand rounds of this through this gun? No, 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 you wouldn't. Uh, would it hurt the gun? Uh, it might. It very well could. Uh, I, I don't know if it would or not. I who who's going to shoot that many out of it? Not 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 anybody. Uh, you know, this is a specialty cartridge. Shoot a couple out of it, get a feel for it, sight it in. Um, clean your barrel out and, uh, and and be done with it. But the, the takeaway from this is, is some of those cartridges, uh, Buffalo Bore, 44 Magnum, I think it's a 340 grain, not only will they not fit, but even if they do fit, uh, they're not meant to be fired in this gun. So that's something. That's something. That's a nasty looking cartridge there. That is, that's, that's a... That's no joke there, man. You know, by far, by far, you know, it's it, this is this is going to be the king of the, the the castle here. Not not saying that these other guns are, are better, but I just don't think that this is going to underpenetrate. Uh, even though this is a much smaller, much lighter bullet, um, generally speaking, the velocity is going to be probably the same fired out of either one of these guns. Um, and, and this velocity is going to be slower than this. I'm just saying that the box is advertised at 1,300 feet per second. And I think that's what you'll get out of these out of these two guns is about 1,300 feet per second, 1,275, right there in that range. Um, but look at the frontal mass of, of the difference in these, these cartridges. If I don't drop them. You know, I mean, by looking at them, I mean, you're automatically going to say, well, the, the 44, you know, I mean, and, and you're right, the 44, it, it's it's going to do more damage, in, in my humble opinion, but the penetration on it may not be as good as this 357 because it's a smaller diameter bullet. Um, it's still fairly heavy, you know, 180 grain, and it's hard cast, which means it's going to punch through stuff. Uh, you may get out of both of these... Uh, similar penetration you may get um, you know 40 inches of penetration out of both of them the 44 may get 40 and this one may get 357 <laughs> 35.7 inches I don't know but I, what I'm saying is I think they're both adequate they're both going to give you adequate penetration uh, if you use the right cartridge and if you use jacketed hollow points in this um, I could it still do it? Yeah, yeah. But I think that it's not going to do what you want it to do. Same thing with this. 
if you use these, if this is what you have in your gun, it's better than nothing. But it's not going to give you the same performance as these. And I'm going to set the phone back down again. Still with you. Don't go away. But I'm not boring you yet. And these are kind of painted. You know, these, these they're all three going to give you good penetration. I do believe out of the three, this is going to give you the least amount of penetration, though. Just, just my opinion. Uh, but you get a lot more of them. You get a whole lot more of them. And and with this gun, you get more than this gun. You get six. You get eight. You get an extra two. Um, so it kind of this gun right here is kind of superfluous unless that's all you got because it only holds six. So when you're talking about six in this one, the blued one, for a six in this one, well then go with the go with the bigger one. Picking up those two extra rounds, and being it, it's going to penetrate very well. That's why I kind of like that one. This one is a whole other debate. It could be, it could be uh, more than adequate, more than adequate. And being you got sixteen rounds, you know, fifteen in the magazine, one in the pipe. You know, the, it could be the clear runaway uh, winner. I, out of the three, just for rounds count. Uh, if one don't do it, you know, number 14, 15, 16 may do it. Um, you know, who who knows? But it's definitely some food for thought. Um, you know, I, I, I can't tell you what to use. You know, I really can't. Um, I, I can just give you my opinion. And my opinion is, is all three of these are good. Especially whichever one you have already. Um, should you go out, you know, if you got a 44 and buy a 10 millimeter, uh, that's completely up to you. Uh, I say, yeah, go out and buy it, but, you know, should you carry it over that one? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, you know, this this one could jam. It could jam. Um, you just you just don't know. So I wanted to recap on on on, on a couple velocities. Um, a 200 grain, uh, 357 Magnum traveling at 1200 feet per second is 639 foot pounds of energy. A 220 grain, 10 millimeter traveling at 1200 feet per second, the same velocity is 703. Okay. So really when you get down to it, if, if you was to do the velocities, they're, they're, they're pretty dang close. The, the the problem with that equation is is, is twelve hundred feet per second out of this right here is their stated velocity, which means that you're probably not gonna get it out of that gun. You're probably gonna have to get an extended barrel. Maybe the five point two five might hit it, maybe. Uh you might have to go with a six inch barrel. Uh, I don't know if they have six inch barrels for these yet or not. So um yeah. Choose choose wisely. You know, are these grizzly cartridges? I've I've heard people talk bad about these before. I've heard stuff where they've had a failure to fire and stuff. Hard primers are they? I don't know. I haven't I haven't uh, I haven't had any issues. Uh, I haven't fired a lot of them. Buffalo bore is is really good quality ammo. I'm sure there's been issues, but for the most part, buffalo bore is very high quality. And in my opinion, if I was going to carry something, I think Buffalo Bore or Underwood, or Underwood, definitely Underwood, Underwood's excellent, uh, would be the two. If I could get some Underwood for this, which I don't know if they have it or not, they may, uh, I, I haven't looked uh, lately, they may have some, some hard cast uh, that, uh, you know, that could, uh, could do it. And I'm not sure why there isn't more hard cast that are in the 240 you know, 260, 280, you know, whatever, 275 grain for the 44 Magnum. I'm, I'm not sure why they must go up to, you know, a 300, 320, 340 grain bullet. Um, I, I think that kind of a calling for this could be, you know, you know, 260, you know, 260 grain, you know, a little bit, little bit heavier than standard, you know, 275 grain uh, pushing, you know, 1300 feet per second out of a 
out of a four inch barrel I think would 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 be very very good um you know they 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 you know they really want to go big you know and 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 velocity and mass is what equals energy it's it's not the diameter of the bullet uh that has to do with stuff but the bigger the diameter of the bullet generally the less penetration all things being equal and and there is a lot of unequalness between these these rounds because this is a lot lot power, more powerful uh substantially more powerful you know you you heard from the numbers uh and those are just numbers sometimes numbers don't always tell the whole story sometimes they will will mislead you and they could be misleading me in in thinking that this is a good gun uh for this, but 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 I know that they penetrate good though so that's that's the thing you know they're 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 hard cast you know, all things being equal hard cast hard cast hard they're all hard cast they're all meant to do the same thing which is penetration 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 so my my word I have talked a lot in this um geez I hope you I hope you learned something um you know of course you can rewind the video and and listen to the, to, to the velocity I would show you my handwriting but you probably couldn't read it anyway um, you know, get a bullet energy calculator. They're they're easy to find on the internet, and 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 play around with it. You know, with 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 what velocities you may get. You know, what if what if you drop down to you know like I did on there a a, a thousand feet per second, eleven hundred feet per second. You know, what's what's the velocity going to be? You know, um, you know if this only hits eleven hundred feet per second with with a hundred eighty grain, that's four hundred eighty foot pounds of energy. Uh, that's substantially more than a nine millimeter. It's it's substantially more than a nine millimeter. Not that a nine millimeter can't hit that, uh, but you got to really hot rod it, and uh, that's going to be real world uh, uh, performance. Meaning that uh, this gun will hit that uh, is what I'm saying. Whereas a nine millimeter that's 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 uh, rated at 480 foot pounds of energy, that's going to be best case scenario. See see what I mean there. Uh, just like all these velocities are, are kind of best case scenario on these 1350, you know, 1200, 1400, 1350, 1300. See what I mean? Those are best case scenarios. These other ones that I read you as I go down from the best case scenarios are more real world scenarios of, of what you're probably going to get out of the gun somewhere in that range. Um, so even the 44 Magnum could be... Um, you know, is 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 you know around between seven hundred and 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 a thousand foot pounds of energy. Um, so seven hundred at this, you know, on this one, if if you got to shoot out a little bit further, could be what you start off with one of these. You know, um, and 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 diameter bullet diameter, they've got the I think it's called the Taylor knockout factor, uh, factors in. The diameter of the bullet. I do not know how to do that. Iraq veteran eighty-eight eighty-eight has a video on that. Check it out. Taylor knockout factor. Barry did a, did a video on it. And it's pretty freaking cool. Uh, factor and you know it, it gives you a number, and and this number is going to be greater than this number, and this number is going to be greater than that. You know it's just it's cool because it factors in the diameter of the bullet. And it's called the Taylor knockout factor. Uh, if that means something to you. See if you can come up with that equation and, um, you know, have gun will travel. And, and you can do your thing with that and maybe pick out the best one. But it is completely up to you. I think that any one of these four guns right here, um, you know, even even a 9mm, uh, they've got hard cast uh, 9mm from Buffalo Boar that he claims would dispatch a bear uh if if you hit him in the, in the in the skull you know it would be instantaneous death uh they still penetrate very very well even being a nine millimeter nine millimeter are you crazy i would never carry that well i'm just saying if that's all you had and assuming your gun could shoot hard cast with just one can glocks are you're not supposed to shoot hard cast so if you got a glock you got to change the barrel out if you don't change the barrel out, your accuracy is going to be bad you're going to follow your barrel probably already know that but if you don't uh think about that 
but yeah, you know, you could you could even even uh, he's even got thirty eights. He's even got thirty eights with Buffalo board that are that are hard cast. That if all you had is a thirty eight, you know, is that the first choice? No, it's not the first choice. It may be your only choice though. That may be all you have is a thirty eight. Get the right ammo. If you get the right ammo, you're going to be much well, much better armed. If you have a 38 with hard cast versus a 357 with jacketed hollow points, the 38s with hard cast are probably going to do better than the 357 with 125 grain jacketed hollow points because you're going to get what? What's that word? More penetration out of them. Exactly. The jacketed hollow points, hollow points, however you want to say it, are not meant for maximum penetration. So, long video, I know. Uh, if you suffered through this whole thing, um, thank you. If, if it took you several parts to watch, thank you too. And please um, leave a comment. You know, if you don't agree with me, that's cool. I will, I will debate you a little bit. <laughs> I will not force anything upon you, but I will, will definitely debate you. Thanks for watching.